Welcome to the edge. And then come on, welcome them to the edge for some reason. A happy Palm Sunday to each of you that have joined us via uh, Facebook this morning. We're excited to have you here this morning. If you would turn in the book of Psalms to uh, the 139th inscription, the 14th verse, if you will, uh, I, I'm going to paraphrase because we know this scripture by now. I want to encourage you to come in this soon coming day and join us here at the edge. We believe God that it is a uh, that it is an experience. Amen. Amen. In fact, it's the everyday God experience. Amen. So we encourage you to make your way here to 2705 East Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, uh, right across from Aiken's Funeral Home, and right in the same plaza with Lady of the Sea. For those of you who live locally, those references mean something. To so those of you that are watching in other places, let me just say to you that Ladies of the Sea has some of the best food around. Uh, other than Sherry and Terry. Amen. 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 We bless God for you. So glad that you're with us this morning. Paraphrasing uh, the 139 Psalms, 14th verse, it says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. That's all you need to remember of that this morning is that you are fearfully and wonderfully. Somebody say, I am fearfully, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And wonderfully I, in fact, I am all that. Amen. I'm all that. I'm that. Why? Because God don't make no, no junk, Amen. no mistakes. He called us to the purpose. Amen. amen. Sherry, you want to read that for us since you don't pull it up in a big book. Okay. okay. Amen. From the King James Version, I yeah. praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Amen. I praise you amen. because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In other, reason, in other words, how I began to tell him thank you amen. is to praise him for what he's done for me, if we could take one of these down, Xander, Xander, can you take, figure, I think it's number, let's get rid of it, let's see, okay. So if that's it, let's get into the word today. We have been in a series called uh, Forward Focus 2016. Amen. That is the whole year, that is the mandate in which we are talking this season. Amen. We, in the past couple of months, have been talking about wasting time. And when God said that if you stop wasting the time, uh, then you'll value the time. If you value the time, I asked him, I said, and how do we do this? Amen. By valuing me. Amen? Amen. So if we're going to value ourselves, one of the things that we have to understand is that we have to appreciate ourselves. And oftentimes what we don't do uh -huh. is really appreciate us. We can't, if we aren't willing to value who we are, how can we expect? Amen. If we don't understand our self-worth, how can we expect anyone Amen. to respect us? Hallelujah. To value us, Amen. to really care about us, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. On oh, last week, we decided that we were going to talk about the fact that if I'm going to value myself, the first thing that I have to do is to remember this, Amen. that I do have value. Amen. How many of us walk around acting like we, we don't know what we worth and who we worth? Uh -huh. and anybody? I am. Anybody in here today? Come on, walk to me for a second. So when we began to do that, uh -huh. God said to us that we had to learn to appreciate uh -huh. who we are. Here's what happens, though. We talked about on last week that if we were going to value ourselves, that we had to make contact with the inner self, Amen. which is where the scripture comes in Amen. that says that I will praise you. Uh -huh. Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. So at once, I've got to get in touch with the person, the creator, the, the contact, the conduit, the catalyst who made uh -huh. me Amen. in order for me to appreciate me, Amen. in order for me to know me. Amen. Amen. So when I do that, something begins to happen. I, 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 get, what happens? I get real uh -huh. with myself. Amen. 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 I get real with myself. I encourage you to take this moment. If mm -hmm. you're watching the live, go to it, hit share, let your friends know that we're here. Amen. Amen. If you're watching, you do the same thing on Facebook. But look at this. So uh -huh. when I get to knowing, the, get, to, get to know the inner me, uh -huh. the inner workings of me, Amen. somebody pops up. Amen. I just go, the inner me, not the enemy. Amen. Sometimes the enemy just stands back and gets him some popcorn and watches the show. But the inner me Amen. comes center stage. Amen? Amen. Step two, we talked about last week, making the inner contact. Step two this week is honestly, somebody say honestly, honestly. facing 
facing your inner obstacle, your inner obstacle and, and the resistance. And the resistance. Here what happens, this is what happens to us in this process is that oftentimes uh -huh. the inner me starts running his or her mouth. Amen. For those of us that may have a little more issue, their mouths, their uh, mouth. God, because there's some voices talking inside. <laughs> and then Amen. they begin to uh -huh. run in their mouth. They have a convention about you. Sweet Jesus. And you begin to count out to uh -huh. what they say and what and what and, and, and they they begin to dictate what you think. Uh -huh. So how do I begin to take care of this battle? Amen. I'm glad you asked. I want you to, to take notes and copious notes today and, and look at how we begin to overcome the inner me, Amen. who I also call the inner critic. Sweet Jesus. Amen. Flip Wilson said and the devil made me do it. The devil oftentimes, as I said, sits back and just watches your show. Today, we're going to tell the inner me and the enemy Amen. to shut the hell up. Amen? Amen? So look at this. What is this critical inner voice of the enemy? We experience this voice as a negative internal commentary. Come on, somebody. I can stop right there. Uh -huh. It is the negative internal commentary. Yesterday, I was driving along, and the Lord told me to call on my dear sister friend, uh, Dr. Samantha Phillips. Uh-huh. And Dr. Sam said, brother, I I've been wanting to say something to you for a minute, uh -huh. and the Lord wouldn't release it, but this is the day of the release. I was like, uh oh she said, what is happening is that there's a root in you uh -huh. that has to be pulled up uh -huh. and destroyed Sweet because Jesus. at some point, somebody must have told you that you weren't worth it Sweet and Jesus. that you weren't going to ever be anybody. And she was right. Sweet At the Jesus. age of seven, there was somebody in my family. I won't tell you who it was because uh -huh. some of my cousins may be watching. Uh -huh. But there was a member of my family that said to me, one day, your parents are going to come to their senses and give you back. Because you are worth the effort. Sweet Jesus. Uh -uh. And for years, that has been, stayed with me. This person has been dead about 30 years. Sweet Jesus. But every now and then, she, and the voice, her voice raises up in me, especially when things uh -huh. don't seem like they're going right. Especially when somebody says uh -huh. to you that, mm, this isn't, I don't think this is going to work. Anybody ever get that? Well, they, they start giving you the lecture about, well, I think we can be really good friends, uh -huh. but you're not my type. And what she translate that to, instead of realizing, let me, and I'm going to put a pen right there for just a second. Uh -huh. Oftentimes, they're doing you the best favor. Gosh. I have stayed friends with some of the people Amen. that said that we that we should not, cannot, could not, Amen. would not be. Mm -hmm. And I thank Jesus uh -huh. on a daily basis <laughs> that we did not. Amen. He would not, <laughs> should not, could not. <laughs> but at the moment, the enemy says, see, uh -huh. you ain't worth it. Nobody, they, they, they realize that you're not. But when I shut the enemy down, Jesus. Something begins to happen. Let me see if your inner voice sounds like my inner voice. It says you're ugly. Uh -huh. It says you're stupid. Sweet it says Jesus. you're fat. It says there's something Sweet wrong Jesus. with you. Then that you're different from other people. Uh -huh. That you're weird. Uh -huh. any, 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 have I heard had anybody? Oh, yes. But look, Dr. Seuss counters that voice and says, I love the prophet Seuss. He says uh, that wh why shall I fit in? Uh -huh. When I was made to stand out. In other words, uh, my weirdness uh -huh. is a wonderful thing. Amen. My difference is a destiny Hallelujah. in the making. Amen. But how do I become, how do I begin to overcome the inner critic? Because we don't have much time. Uh -huh. uh, but and, and, and we don't finish today. We'll talk about this more on Wednesday evening. Amen. I would also recommend to you that if this is a part of your problem, that the enemy uh, then begins to, to motivate you to self-sabotage, why don't you cut it off? Why don't you mess it up uh -huh. before it messes over? You? And then, why uh -huh. don't you get why don't you get out while the getting out is good? Amen. Amen. Why, don't you, why don't you just back up and tell the people you can't because you know you can't and Amen. you won't and all the blah 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 oh, it comes forth then you can put the blah blah and realize that what it is but look at this look at this <laughs> but there was a book I was going to recommend I'm sorry the book that I would recommend to you is called Crash uh -huh. the Chatterbox 
Right. One of the best books by Stephen Furtick ever in all the days of my life, when he says to us that you can cancel the audition. What does that say to us today? Furtick says that when you, when, when you realize that Jeremiah 29 and 11 uh -huh. says to you that he had a plan. Uh -huh. Not only did he have a plan and he had a purpose, but he knew who you were supposed to be. He did. saw your potential even before the sperm hit the egg. He knew who you were going to be. But look at this. He knew. What are you going to know? Sweet Jesus. Mm. What are you going to know? Amen. Somebody look at somebody and say, the time is now. The time, the time is that. So how do I begin to overcome the inner critic? Step one is to identify what your critical inner voice is telling you. When you hear that voice, look, the Bible says, and my sheep shall know my voice. But look at this. Not only do the sheep know his voice, but the inner voice knows you. Why? And you say, oh, that sounds familiar. You know why it sounds familiar? Uh-huh. You know why it sounds like you? Why? Because it is you. Sweet Jesus. Look at somebody and say, it is you. It is you. Amen. So the only way you're going to change how you think about you uh -huh. is how you talk about you yeah. to you. That's Sweet a tweetable. Jesus. The only way, the only way, the only way is when I begin to realize whose I am. Mm -hmm. And when I realize whose I am, then I can Amen. begin to identify. identify. Did I just say identify? Identify. Identify who I am. Look at this. If you take, and we're not going to get into the psychological part, but you know it's the id, the ego, and what's the other one? Come on, psychological. The, the, psycho, the id, the ego, and I can't remember the other one. But anyway, uh -huh. but look at this. Identify the id. Amen. Look at this. Oftentimes, is look at this. I didn't. Uh -huh. Stop that. I harm myself. Jesus. I, I tell myself that I'm not worth it. Nobody else has to. Anthony Brown Group there has a song that we sing here. We love the song. says uh, he thought I was worth it, that I was to die for. But how is it that he who created us can think that we're worth it, uh -huh. but the creation doesn't think that he or she is worth it? So what does that say to us? That we're telling God, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Sweet Jesus. That's what you're saying to him. Basically. Come on, preach up. Get a little offended if I you because you heard me use hell if you want to. But the bottom line is this. Is that you are saying to God, you have no clue. Sweet Jesus. When in all actuality, we're clueless. Sweet Jesus. And as long as we stay clueless about who we are. Amen. We will never be all that he intended us to Sweet be. Jesus. And we will settle every time for uh -huh. mediocrity and call it the miracle. Come Look at somebody up. say to me, the mundane, the mundane is, not is not the miracle. It's not the miracle. Okay? The mediocre, the mediocre is not a part of the master's plan. It's not a part of the master's plan. If the Lord says that greater work would we do and that there was a greatness in us, then why are we settling for mediocrity? In the process. You know, I, I would love to do my best um, life coaching this morning, but I'm excited about this work. So the preacher comes out instead of the life strategist or the life coach. Look at this. Oftentimes, even when we get to the brink of success, uh -huh. we self-sabotage because we are afraid on, that preacher. people will find out that we really aren't as good as we think we are and have said we are. In other words, we talked a good game. Come on, we made it seem right. like we were the best thing happening. Come but on, when we get behind closed doors, we we go into the fetal position on, and begin to talk to, to that nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Then we begin to tell ourselves that, that at the end of the day that we're a failure and that, ah. that I, every time I try, nothing works out. And the reason nothing works out is because in your trying, you are tried by the inner voice. Amen. You, say, on, you, you tried me. The inner voice will try you every time. Every time. Come on, preacher. Because he knows uh -huh. your buttons. Amen. She knows your buttons. Amen. Amen. But see, while they're knowing buttons, you need to know God. Amen. Hallelujah. When you begin to know God uh -huh. and really have a relationship with Amen. him, you realize that everything that he has ever said about you uh -huh. is true. true. And you can stop living the lie Come that on, you preacher. told yourself about yourself. Come on, preacher. The word says, and ye shall know the truth. 
and the Amen. truth shall set you free. But what time, what happens is that you have no clue about the truth because you lived a lie and you allowed the lie to be your truth. Sweet Jesus, tell the truth. So you stay bound in the process. Uh -huh. And if you stay bound in the process, you will never be successful in the progress. Come on, preacher. <laughs> so I have to identify what the voice is telling me. First, I even back up and say I have to identify the voice. Amen. Come on, preacher. Is it my voice? Amen. Is it the voice of people that I thought, if it was my grandmama, if it was my mama, my daddy, these are voices who are supposed to nurture me, who are supposed to tell me right. every single day that I'm great. Hey, we need to have a moment, an Abilene moment from the hell. You is smart. You is nice. On, you is important. Come on. Come on. You is smart. Right. You is We're nice. Right. You is important. important. You need to every morning get up and say, hey, beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. I have seen some really ugly people Amen. in my life uh -huh. who have an attitude. Uh -huh. and, and, and it is one that you have to stand back and go, wow. Amen. Because nobody told them they were ugly. Okay. No, still, people told them they was precious. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, look at that baby. They're so precious. When people tell you your baby precious, that is a, 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 a colloquial, that is a sidebar for that child sure is ugly. But look at this. It ain't even the same day. Remember when, when uh, Shug comes to the door at the color purple and they coming out of the rain and Seely opens the door. Now she is standing there enamored by because she has never seen anybody wet as she could be, but still as beautiful as Shug. And Shug pronounces to her. She says to her, her greeting to her is, you sure is ugly. But how is it that the person that told her was ugly began to see her inner beauty, and the inner beauty began to to to, to create not a facade, but manifest an outward beauty uh -huh. to the point that, for those of you that didn't know, Shug fell in love with Seely, and Seely fell in love with Shug. Now get over it. But the bottom line is this: that in the process. Oftentimes, Amen. we have that very same moment when we look at the mirror and we tell ourselves, you sure is ugly. Sweet but see, when you start to begin to count your positives, uh -huh. the negatives don't have a voice. Amen. And not only do they not have a voice, oh, they don't have a vote. Amen. 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 Oh, God. Come on, look, 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 look. So I need to identify the critical inner voice. I need to know whose voice it is. I need to know what it's telling me. Look, I need to acknowledge through this process that it is separate from my real point of view. In other words, again, the inner voice often is the infiltrator of my very destiny. Amen. Let that marinate for just a second. As long as the inner voice tells me that I can. In my, it then it begins to dictate to my mind Amen. the reasons I want. Amen. 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 I don't know about you today, but I am happy in this place. Whew. I'm happy in this place Amen. that we can realize that as we experience the everyday God experience, Amen. that there's something that's rising up in me that not only pushes me to the edge, but says you'll never fall, but you will soar. Amen. 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 Oh, come on today. Look at this. But when I when I get to acknowledge that through the process that that, that that separates my real point of view from the lies that I told myself, I begin to remember that the inner voice is not a reflection. Look at this. Say this. My inner me my is inner not a reflection of my reality. It's not a reflection of my reality. Okay, y'all don't y'all don't sound like y'all really believe that. Say it again. My inner me. It's not a reflection of my reality. Reality. Amen. She had to take a pause and, and <laughs> grab her. Okay. Look, it, it is a viewpoint. Look at this. It is a viewpoint that is based on destructive early experiences. Or as Dr. Sam said yesterday, the very root Amen. of why I am in this mode of self-sabotage. Amen. I was talking to another one of my sisters. And she said, I have got to get out of this place that I keep self-sabotaging myself. I get there and I let fear take over. And to me, I've always thought of her as the most fearless person. Look at this. The person that I have consumed, that I have considered to be the most fearless uh -huh. is often the most fearful. Sweet Jesus. Amen. One of the things I will tell you is that I've always walked by faith. I've never been afraid 
to do anything. Amen. But there was a point in my life where there were some people who began to, to minister uh -huh. to me that it wasn't possible. Sweet Jesus. Those are the people that you tell them, well, I'm withdrawing my, min I'm withdrawing my membership to your ministry. Amen. Because that ministry is destructive. Amen. Amen. Look at the thing that, that oftentimes you, they're just some family members you can't go around. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the truth. They, all they ever remember is they who? Come they on. don't know your future. Amen. They know your history. Amen. And guess what? Oftentimes, they take creative license and begin to ghostwrite your story. Amen. Come on, preacher, tell the truth. They begin to ghostwrite it because their opinion of you is based on what happened to you. Amen. But see, they don't understand that what happened to you uh -huh. is not always what's happening in you. Amen. Hallelujah. When I begin to understand that the voice that I should hear, I heard the voice of Jesus say. Uh -huh. When Jesus. I begin to recognize that voice, uh, the inner voice has nothing to, to say to me. Amen? Amen? Look at this. If you watch the show, The Voice, uh -huh. th th there's a blind audition. Uh -huh. You hear a voice. You don't see a face. You have no way to preconceive right. what the person looks uh -huh. like. How many of us understand that the inner me was not a part of your blind audition? Amen. At Calvary, when Jesus, oh, before Jesus hung and died for you, he already knew that you were a yes. superstar in the making. Yes. Amen. Oftentimes. 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 Uh -huh. We listen to the lies. Sweet Jesus. And based on who it came from, uh -huh. it becomes our choice. Become Amen. Amen. Point two. I need to help. I need to differentiate. Somebody said differentiate. Differentiate. From my critical inner voice. Huh, to write those thoughts down in second person as you statements. Amen? Amen. For example, a thought like, I can't get anything right. I'll never be successful should be written as you can't get anything right. You'll never be successful. This helps you to see the thoughts in an alien point uh -huh. of view and not as true statements. Look at this. When I confess, uh -huh. the Bible says that it is my confession. So a man think of it as hard. So is he. It is my confession. When the I opens its mouth. Uh -huh. It begins to speak to the you in me. But when it's you saying it, it's an alien voice. It is not even me. I even move, not even second person. I go to third person and they say, they will not succeed. Amen. They won't on, make it. It has nothing to do with me. Come on, preacher. Oh, God. Hallelujah. When the inner me uh -huh. begins to dictate this mantra of failure, uh -huh. this manifesto of failure, you have to say to it, uh, that's my opinion. Amen. Give it back. Give it back. Come on, preacher. How dare we, we. Us. us, me, Amen. to give somebody the pen which houses the ink that they write the negative statements about me. Sweet Jesus. Come on, preacher. I want my pen back. I want my pen back. And then Sherry has this whole raggedy pen that she likes. <laughs> and it has a style, so it's multifunctional. Mm -hmm. But she always makes sure she asks for it back. Amen. Because one of the things that I know is folk will walk off with your pen. Amen. But not only will they walk off with your pen, uh -huh. they'll walk off with you if you let them. Amen. Come on, they'll walk job. off with all of you. There, there's a, a line in Colored Girls that somebody walked off with all my stuff. Amen. How many of us have given them the key to our heart? Sweet and they Jesus. have robbed us Amen. of our joy. On, They've man. been given them a key and they have usurped uh -huh. our peace. Amen. In fact, they pawn. Look at somebody say, somebody tried to pawn my peace. Somebody tried to pawn my peace. And I ain't talking about the P-I-E-C-E. -E, but Amen. And sometimes they'll try to prostitute and pimp that if Amen. you're not careful. Yes. But your Come peace, on, your P-E-A-C-E, -E, they tried to pawn it because they know the peace that passes all Come understanding. On, <laughs> I like that. Oh, my God. Look at this. I have to then, with the very pen that I've taken back, I have to begin writing down a more realistic uh -huh. and comprehensive evaluation of myself. Write these responses in the first person. I 
Come on, preach. Am it. successful. Successful. I am blessed. Okay. I am worthy. Come on with me. I, I am, am blessed. Blessed. I am Amen. successful. Yes. I am important. I am brilliant. I am creative. You put in whatever you need to behind the I am as long as it is a superlative that says to you, yes, you are. Yes, you can. And yes, you will. And when they ask to borrow the pen again, you tell them, look, not only can you not borrow a pen, not only can you have a piece of paper, Amen. But I don't want to hear anything else you have to say. I don't want to read anything else you have to write. I don't want to even have you implement that or implicate me in your process. Amen. You cannot implement failure in my life anymore because failure does not live here. Why? Because I said Amen. it doesn't. Amen. Amen. Come on, preach up. Because I am successful. So if I'm successful, that uh -huh. means I don't have any room for failure. Amen. Failure is not, somebody say with me, an option. An option. Come on. An option. In the last four minutes, I want you to understand this. That when I begin to respond to the inner critic, uh -huh. the inner critic realizes this. That he has no credence. Amen. He has no power. See, when we, when I remember when I was doing television. There was a critic named Walt Belcher who would write about TV. Now, he never wrote anything bad about me, thank God. But at the same time, Walt had an opinion. And I asked him one day, he says, what, I said, what makes you a critic? Uh -huh. He says, my pen and my sharp tongue. Sweet Jesus. And oftentimes what happens to us is that we give him a pen uh -huh. and we give him a voice. Sweet Jesus. Uh -huh. All right, preacher. Come on now. We give them the pen. We give them the voice. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? Look at this. You need to remember not to act on the directives Amen. of my inner critic. I cannot act on the directive. If the inner critic says that I'm not, I need to sit back and cross out the word not and say I am. am. Hallelujah. I am not successful. That one word, not. That negative Amen. thought, that thought, that permissive thought that tells you that it's over Sweet Jesus. and you can't, can be crossed out of your mind, Amen. crossed out of your memory, crossed out of your Amen. vocabulary, and all of a sudden everything changes. Amen. Why? Because I remember a little scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know why it says can? It's because it's permissive. I have to give myself permission Amen. to do it Come on, and to believe it and to achieve it. Amen. Is this word working for anybody? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The word says that I'm fearfully and wonderfully mean. That means that any time the inner me wants to tell you you should be scared Amen. and tells you that it won't happen, Amen. you can go back into your little file and say, according to this memo, the addendum to what you have written uh -huh. says that I can't. Amen. Which means I will if I say I will. Amen. And it will I will if I say I can. Amen. If I say I can, I will. I will. Come Amen. on. Amen. Amen. Uh, we thank you this morning. We pray that this word has blessed you. Uh, we've got about two minutes left. I want to remind you that we're here at 2705 East Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, across from Aiken's Funeral Home. We are also in the same class as Ladies of the Sea. Uh -huh. If you've not gotten a copy of my new book, random Amen. 30 thoughts while thinking out loud and collecting my thoughts i promise you that every time the inner voice begins to speak uh -huh. there will be something in here that becomes your rhetorical response Amen. that says not it's not rhetoric but it will say to them look uh i want you to understand that you keep telling me that i can't uh, look at this i will not hinge my success on somebody see that's the problem oftentimes the inner me is comparing what you do it See, the enemy begins to try to tear you down by comparing you to everybody else. Look, Amen. the Bible says that I am uniquely created in his Amen. image. So if I'm uniquely created, that means that he did not create me to oh. be like anybody else. Right. So on this day, as we get ready to leave, I want you to remember this. Come on, Look at this. Let me get to it. Never hinge your success on somebody else's dream. Amen. What's yours is yours. It's yours to birth to produce, Amen. to present. So walk in your purpose, blaze your trail, and obtain your prize. And tell the enemy to what? Shut the hell up. We'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. And have a good day.